Hey guys, in this video what we're going to do is show you how to use WebMO to solve bonding problems in chemistry. This particular problem we're working on says using WebMO to form a MOPAC PM7 geometry optimization for CH3F. Then use the resulting structure to report values for each item below. And what it's looking for is your carbon fluorine bond length, your hydrogen carbon hydrogen bond angle, the Vesper shape, each of these are values that you might come in contact with when you're working through a WebMO type problem. To access the WebMO website, all you need to do is just enter this address into any browser. I use Safari. You'll see a page that sort of looks something like this. To log in, all you need to do is just enter guest and then guest. All right, so we're going to start a new job. And again, remember in this problem, what we're trying to do is we're solving for the structure for CH3F. Remember, hydrogen and fluorine are considered monovalent atoms, so when we actually draw the structure, we're going to put those on the outside of the molecule, and then we'll put carbon in the middle. So we'll load our software. This is the build molecule page, and we'll go ahead and put our hydrogen atoms on the outside, and we'll switch this to fluorine. Fluorine on the outside as well, too, and then we'll put carbon in the middle, and what we'll do is we'll draw single lines to each of these atoms. So um, to do this, what you want to do is click on the atom and then drag to the adjacent atom. That forms a carbon-hydrogen bond. One there, one there, and one there. All right, so if we take a look at this molecule and sort of spin it around in three dimensions, you see that it kind of looks pretty ugly. It looks kind of flat. So what we can do is we can clean up the geometry before we start our calculation. And what we can do is uh, click either the clean up button right here, which is a comprehensive cleanup using a whole bunch of rules that are embedded in the WebMO software, or you can do something called a mechanics cleanup. Either or at this point, it really doesn't matter, but we need to clean it and make sure that it looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use the comprehensive cleanup with the idealized geometries. And so when I do that, I get a really strange looking structure. And if I rotate this around in three dimensions, you can see it is definitely a three dimensional structure. Um, I really encourage you to play around with the structure a little bit and just to kind of be sort of familiar with it. We'll now submit the structure for calculation. So we'll click the bottom right hand arrow. We're going to set this to MOPAC. Go ahead and title it. I'll title mine with my initials JMC. And this is a CH2F2 molecule. We'll go ahead and submit this for a geometry optimization calculation. And we'll set this to PM7. We won't touch charge and we won't touch multiplicity. That's something a bit more advanced than what we're going to do, but know that you can always change them if you need to. We'll click forward and we've now submitted the molecule for calculation. What we're waiting for is for our calculation to, it's currently running, we're waiting for it to be complete and it takes about 0.6 seconds for this to happen. So it's now complete, so I'll go ahead and click on the file. And now I have the optimized, the PM7 optimized structure. All right, so let's look at our first problem here. It says we want to determine the carbon fluorine bond length. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to click the carbon atom in the middle. So we'll use our selector tool, which is right here. We'll click the carbon atom in the middle, and then we'll click the adjacent fluorine atom right there. And we see that the bond length is 1.348 Angstrom. So I'll go ahead and put that number in. So we've now reported that the bond length is 1.348. The next question asks us to determine what is the hydrogen carbon hydrogen bond angle. To do this, we'll go back to our WebMO. What we're looking to do now is again use our adjust tool, selector tool or adjust tool, and we're looking for the hydrogen carbon hydrogen bond angle. So you want to select the atoms in that order. For a hydrogen carbon hydrogen bond angle, you want to make sure that carbon atoms in the middle when you select it in your molecule. So what we do is we go to the hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen bond angle, and down here we see that the bond angle worked out to 112.518. So we'll go back to our WebMO assignment and we will, so we'll go back to this page and we'll add our data. And so now we have our bond angle reported. All right, next question, what is the Vesper shape? This is going to take a little bit of mental work to try to figure this one out, but in essence what's going on here is, is that you have a molecule, you have a carbon atom in the middle that is surrounded by one, two, three, four atoms. In essence, the atoms are kind of evenly shared around the molecule. If you're into AXE type nomenclature, 
you'll notice that this is an AX4 system. In this particular instance, what we're specifically looking for is the fact that this is actually, you have a, a center atom with four atoms that are hanging off of this. So therefore, considering it's an AX4 type system, we would classify this as being a tetrahedral molecule. All right, the next question asks us to determine the carbon atom hybridization. Um, so to use WebMO to figure this out, all we need to do is just select the center atom. So we'll use our adjust tool. We'll click on the center atom. And if you look down here at the bottom, it tells you that this is a carbon atom. The hybridization is sp3 and the charge is zero. So in this case, we would report sp3. Finally, the last question, um, what is the molecular polarity? This one always throws students for a loop. Um, but it's actually quite easy to do. Pull up your data. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down the page and what you're looking for is a metric called dipole moment, which is right here. I'll go ahead and highlight it so you can sort of see this. Dipole moment is a measurement of how polar the molecule is. Nonpolar molecules will have dipole moments that are approximately zero. Polar molecules are going to have dipole moments greater than zero. In this case, we see that the dipole moment is 2.194 Debye units. And so that's the value that we'll actually report. And there you have it. You've got all the data that you need to try to replicate this experiment on your own and make sure that you're using WebMO correctly. If you have any questions, just email me, jcar.cac.edu. Good luck.